Imagine you stand under the night sky. Imagine holding a grain of sand in your hand. Now stretch this hand out into the night sky. What could possibly hide in that tiny area covered by that grain of sand? Prepare to get your mind blown. Hello everybody and welcome! This week saw the release of the first real images from the James Webb Space Telescope, the largest and most capable observatory humanity has ever put into space. And it was pretty phenomenal! In this video we will first go over the images and discuss them a little bit. Then I will give you a quick overview of where JWST is, why that is important and how it works. And finally, we'll talk about the increased capability of Webb compared to the venerable Hubble Space Telescope and how this is going to impact science going forward. So, the images. We've already seen engineering samples that NASA has released over the course of the past few months while JWST was still being tested and commissioned. I got a video on that uh, you can watch by clicking or tapping on the top right corner if you want. But the newly released pictures are now fully colorized images of the universe that are pretty breathtaking. The first one was the deep field image I showed you in the beginning. It depicts galaxy cluster SMAX0723 and was taken by NIRCAM, one of four of Webb's instruments. More on them in just a minute. This region of space is about 4.6 billion light years away. Meaning the light we are now capturing has been emitted when the Earth was formed. The level of detail is astounding, especially when comparing it to an image taken of the same cluster by the Hubble Space Telescope a few years ago. If you're wondering why some of the galaxies appear to be bent, that is because of gravitational lensing. Due to its mass, the cluster acts as a gravitational lens, bending light from behind it around itself in part even magnifying galaxies that are even far older and further away than SMAX 0723 itself. <laughs> I could make an hour long video on this image alone, but I want to move on and I will put links in the description where you can read up on each image in detail. Suffice to say, this image alone was so impressive that it inspired the President of the United States to organize a press briefing just to present it. Next up is the Carina Nebula. It almost looks like a rocky mountainside, but is in fact a young star forming region called NGC 3324, 7600 light years away from Earth. The image was captured in infrared light and this enables Webb to peek through the dust, making stars visible we otherwise would never have been able to see. As for how big this nebula is, the tallest peaks, if you want to call them that, are roughly 7 light years tall. This nebula is slowly being eroded by ultraviolet light emitted from young stars located in the top of the image. Scientists hope to learn more about how stars are formed by studying this region of space. Then we have Stéphane's quintet, named after French astronomer Édouard Stéphane, who discovered this visual group of five galaxies in 1877. This magnificent view was created by stitching together almost a thousand separate images to create a large 150 megapixel image. Thanks to Webb's superior resolution and capabilities, astronomers hope to learn more about the interactions between galaxies. It may be called a quintet, but in reality only four of the galaxies are really close together at about 290 million light years from Earth, with the fifth being more in the foreground, barely 40 million light years away. Watching this group provides astronomers insights into galaxy mergers, something that in the far future will happen to our own Milky Way galaxy when it will merge with the Andromeda galaxy. Another image is from the Southern Ring Nebula, 2500 light years away from us. This is actually two stars locked into a tight orbit with one of them sending out rings of dust and gas for thousands of years. For the first time, thanks to Webb's MIRI instrument, astronomers recognize that the dimmer star is actually cloaked in dust, something they were not able to see before. And 
something they don't yet have an answer for. They had expected this star to have already shed its last layer. So why is it still covered in dust? We're just into the first images and JWST is generating new science already. And finally we have to talk about WASP-96b. No, this is not going to sting. I hope. This is a hot gas giant exoplanet that is 1150 light years away. Its mass is less than half of Jupiter, but its diameter is 12 times greater with temperatures above 810 Kelvin. Well, think about how hot Mercury is. Now imagine this exoplanet orbiting a star similar to our own Sun at just a ninth of the distance of Mercury's orbit. The crazy exoplanet completes one full orbit in just three and a half Earth days. And still, Webb's spectrograph instruments were able to detect water in the atmosphere of this hellhole. In vaporized form, of course, but still. Researchers are going to pore over the data and will try to determine the temperature of the atmosphere in deeper layers of WASP-96b. Other molecules like methane or oxygen were not immediately detected here, but they may appear in future exoplanet observations. So how was JWST able to gather all this data? I already mentioned infrared light. Webb was constructed specifically ob to observe the universe in this type of light that is not visible to the human eye. Why? Well, due to the expansion of the universe, the older something is, the further it is moving away from us. This causes the light of the area we want to observe to redshift into the infrared spectrum. Think Doppler effect when a siren is moving away from you just with light. By capturing infrared light, Webb can observe stars and galaxies almost from the beginning of the universe. To do this, a huge mirror made of gold-coated beryllium hexagons collects all of this ancient light and directs it into the instrument cluster. In there are four main instruments. The Near-Infrared Camera near -cam, The Near-Infrared Spectrograph near -spec, The Fine Guidance Sensor and Near-Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph NIRIS And finally the Mid-Infrared Instrument MIRI. To be able to capture faint infrared light, Webb was positioned far away into space at the Lagrange L2 point with its mirror always kept in absolute darkness thanks to a giant sunshield that was unfolded while the observatory was on its way to its destination. The sunshield is also part of an intricate cooling mechanism that is necessary for the observatory's frosty operating temperatures ranging from 40 to just 6 Kelvin. How this impressive feat of cooling was done is one of the main aspects of a video I did in the past. Please go and watch that to learn more about the ingenious ways the engineers have solved this problem. It is really fascinating. While the infrared cameras will capture breathtaking images as shown in this video, the spectrographs will analyze the composition of what Webb is looking at. For instance, exoplanet atmospheres or entire galaxies. And this leads me to why JWST will change astronomy. It will probably change our entire understanding of the universe. How it came into existence, how galaxies and stars are formed, what will happen to our own galaxy in the future. <laughs> I mean, just look at the comparison between older images taken by Hubble from the same regions Webb has observed for its first images. Not only are they much richer in detail and offer a higher resolution, the greater data quality also makes scientists realize things they were not aware of before. I already mentioned the star in the Southern Ring Nebula being covered in dust. There are also a mirror effects of sorts going on in the deep field image discovered by analyzing the spectra of galaxies that are 9.3 billion years old with NIRIS. A mirage in space due to gravitational lensing? <laughs> There is surely more to learn from this image alone. In addition to the higher resolution, JWST can generate images way quicker than Hubble. That deep field from the beginning of the video? Webb was looking at it for roughly half a day. It took Hubble weeks to observe the same region. 
this is important because it will enable a much faster turnaround for observations, making it possible to cram more science into JWST's lifespan of approximately 10 years. Why just 10 years? Hubble has been around for much longer, hasn't it? Well, due to Webb's location at the Lagrange L2 point, the observatory has to spend small amounts of propellant to actually stay in orbit over there. And there is no way that we can get a refueling mission over there and get propellant back into the observatory. So 10 years it is. But it's going to be a jam-packed 10 years of discovery. I mean, look at what was already achieved with the first images. The first exoplanet data that was released already discovered water on a distant world and there are more to follow. This atmospheric spectrography is something I'm actually even more excited for than the admittedly beautiful images we have seen and will see. With the increased capabilities of Webb, scientists will put hundreds of distant worlds under the proverbial microscope, well, telescope of course, but you know what I'm getting at. And maybe we will discover an exoplanet in the habitable zone of its star system that has water and oxygen in its atmosphere. This could then be a target for further study and maybe one day we will discover life out there. <laughs> I'm actually pretty sure that we will do that. The only question is, when? If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.